Williams. Let me get to my guest. It is Carrie Abernathy, immediate past president of the state's federation of republican women and also the current treasurer for the national federation of republican women carrie good morning how are you welcome back thank you for joining us i appreciate it can you hear me oh absolutely paul always a pleasure let's get to it because we got a lot of things we were talking politics all morning long of course that's what we do but this is going to be a, a critical election for a couple of reasons, there are so many topics out there that are tremendously important to Mississippi women. And that's, in a lot of ways, whether you like it or not, different than Connecticut women. We have our, we have our own um, likes and dislikes, et cetera, et cetera. But speak to that if you don't mind. Absolutely, Paul. Um, first of all, I wanted for your viewers and listeners, tell them a little bit about the National Federation of Republican Women. Sure. We were founded in 1938. Absolutely. We are the largest grassroots Republican women's organization in the country. We have tens of thousands uh, of active members uh, in local clubs across the nation and a very active group here in Mississippi. But about uh, a month ago, I was in uh, uh, Oklahoma City for our national mm -hmm. convention. It happens every two years. And this past weekend, I was on the Mississippi Gulf Coast for our Mississippi convention. And we talked about a lot of issues, but one issue that kept coming up was, even with both of those conventions, were how do we protect what it truly means to be a woman and how are we protecting women's spaces? And this is why we are being told that women are nothing more than just wearing lipstick, the pronouns that we use, and now we just cease to exist among some people uh, in the country uh, and that we are nothing more than an idea of self-identification. But we are grateful to live in a state like Mississippi where we are leading the fight against the liberal left. And the reason that we've been able to do that, Paul, is because we've had conservative leadership in Mississippi. Yeah. You, you look at two places, Louisiana, which has traditionally had a Democrat governor for a while, and also in Arkansas, which has had a Democrat governor for a while. Sarah Huckabee Sanders had a press conference uh, uh, several days ago. And with the help of her House and her Senate, which are now controlled by Republicans, were able to get some things in the law to change uh, all of this crap about uh, uh, pronouns and, and changing all of that, where they actually had to go in and spend money, uh, taxpayers' dollars, to change some of this to birthing people instead of mothers. So you are absolutely right. And when that happens, and that's why I said earlier, be careful of what you wish for. You might get it as far as the inf uh, infusion of over 700 offices in the state, uh, boards and commissions, with Democrats coming in with a Democrat governor. So I, I think that leads to a concern for everybody in the state of Mississippi, but as you said, certainly for the ladies of the state. So let's touch base on just a little bit of policy sure. and what we've been able to accomplish here in Mississippi and where we need to go. Back in 2021, uh, under the leadership of Senator Angela Hill, Mississippi passed the Fairness Act, and that simply prevented boys and men from competing in girls and women's sports. Mississippi was the second state to do that, only behind Idaho. And what the audience needs to realize is that Governor Reeves stood by Mississippi women by signing that bill into law. So we completely understand while not, while this issue is settled here in Mississippi, uh, there are girls and women across the country that do not yet have that protection. But it was because mm -hmm. of the leadership that we have, we were able to do that. And just as recently in 2013, um, under the strong leadership of uh, Governor Reeves and Speaker Gunn, we were able to, again, one of the first states in the nation to pass uh, a bill for experimental gender transition treatment of minors, and that was called the REAP Act. And it was very yes. important that we protect young children and minors from these experimental surgeries. So again, while this is not the case in the rest of the country, 
we are able to protect minors in Mississippi who may be experiencing gender dysphoria. And um, today, that's not being pushed in Mississippi anymore, those treatments. Are, 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 you, are you worried also in future legislation, future directives from um, not only the legislature but the governor's office, how this works its way down into schools, too, in our education system? Well, absolutely, Paul. And the one thing is that while Mississippi is making strides, we have got to do more. Mm-hmm. We have, you know, had great leadership the past uh, four years, particularly on this issue. But as you know, uh, Ronald Reagan said it best. He called it that um, freedom is no more than one generation away from extinction. Let me just press upon, for us, it's only, it, it could be down to one election. One election could change the course uh, incredibly. And that's why that we have to, we have to stand strong on this. We have to start moving forward. And Sadly, there's still an urgent need and real issue in Mississippi. And of course, that is, uh, we look at it as what's needed is a women's bill of rights. And that will protect women in all safe spaces. Um, for example, locker rooms, college dormitories, abuse and rape shelters, as well as um, any other place where um, a woman is that a man could walk yeah. in that day and de- define himself as a woman. So th- there's still things that need to be done. And I know that Riley Gaines and, and Paula Scallion what was in Mississippi uh, about a month ago. Yes. And Paul, every place that these ladies came to speak in a public setting, there was standing room only. This is a very serious issue among women women that have children, grandchildren, that these areas are protected. Now, I want to say that there's other issues that we are supporting and promoting, but right now, this issue has demanded our attention and one that we have really got to look at. Do you feel these are at risk as far as any progress or getting them done with the power of a veto by a Democrat in the governor's office? Absolutely. Absolutely. For us, there's only one candidate in this race who has stood resolute on this issue, and that is uh, Governor Reeves. Mm -hmm. He has, you know, he has backed women and our women's issues, and uh, our lawmakers, for the most part, have stood resolute as well in advocating for these, these issues. Yeah. And I do know you talked about other issues, the border, education, and all of these different things. When when you look at what has happened to our border and then how that has transcended into uh, the, the narrative of uh, sex trafficking and, and abuse and everything else, it, it's hard to believe that um, we are where we are with the numbers. The numbers are just absolutely – I saw them the other day as far as the potential number of kids who are – we don't know where they are, you know. We have no idea where they are. Can you hang on for another segment? Because I want to ask you, what are you guys doing as far as the ground game? Because job number one is getting people to the polls. And I, I think you you, you folks are you are the nuclear power in this. Because if moms and wives can't get votes out, we got a problem. Back more with Kerry Abernathy, who is the current treasurer for the National Federation of Republican Women. And again, uh, ground game is so important. If, if people follow politics, they understand the people who are more, most organized. Uh, it's always uh, election after election. And it seems like it's more important now than ever because the other side understands getting people to the polls when the vote is anemic is powerful. It wins offices. Your thoughts on this, and what are you guys doing in your organization? Absolutely. So, first of all, I want to share with people, there is Mm -hmm. a reason to go to the polls, and there's a reason to go with excitement and tell your neighbors, and this is why. And I want to make sure that I get this right. But for the past, uh, well, as far as education goes, in 10 years, we were ranked 49th. We're now 21st, Paul. Mississippi. Mississippi. Our fourth graders reading and math gains 
lead the nation. Our graduation rate in Mississippi is the highest that it's ever been, okay? Now, prior to Governor Reeves taking office, we were averaging about 900 million a year in new investments. In 2022 alone, now listen to this, we had $6 billion in new capital investments in this state. Six billion, Paul, with a B, okay? Uh, so that is something to be excited about. There's been investments in education, the teacher pay raise. So conservatives and Republicans have a really good reason to go to the polls and vote, okay? On that track record, and we know that that will only get better. We've got in a tr tremendous amount of momentum. But I want Republicans to know that if we stay home and we don't turn out record numbers, that's how Mississippi turns purple and that's how we get a Democrat in the governor's mansion. Simple as that. Simple as that. Um, I could post the number of people. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up. I'm well, sorry. Well, I, you know, I was just going to say that we live, we live in a state where we have all statewide elected officials are Republicans. And we assume that they will win because we know that we're a red state. We know that we have a shared common value of, you know, we want conservative back policy. But at the end of the day, it's going to come to turn out. We've got to make sure, like my home county, Rankin County, we've got to we've got to run up the numbers. We've got to have a large turnout. We've got to have large turnout in DeSoto County. We also have to have a large turnout on the Mississippi Gulf Coast to offset those numbers that's going to be coming out of the Mississippi Delta. So while I'm part of an organized effort and we're getting our ladies out, they know the issues, they're knocking doors, they're, uh, they're you know, contacting the neighbors if they see someone in the grocery store reminding them to vote. We're, we're doing all that, Paul, but look, for you don't have to be a part of a particular campaign or, you know, for our group, which we'd love you to be a part of the group, but this right here is the most powerful thing, and I'm holding up my cell phone, is that you send a personal message to your friends peer-to-peer. -peer, Absolutely. Number one, reminding them of Election Day and what the issues are, and we just shared those with you and why Republicans be, can be excited about going to the poll and mm -hmm. excited about... Uh, getting their neighbors on just what I, sh I shared with you, those tremendous successes that, you know, that it's come down from our governor, but Paul, all the way down the ticket, fill that ballot all the way down. We have got to keep this momentum going and we need Republicans in every office. Carrie, when you listen to some of the ads and you see some of these ads from the, from the Democrats, wherever they're coming out of, one of the reasons we look at this a little bit different, who've been following this for a long time, because um, some of the things are so specious that, that they're almost laughable. It's not like Tate Reeves as a politician just popped up on the scene. For eight long years as the state treasurer, he did a, a fabulous job. He really did. He, uh, there, there were no scandals. Uh, there was, uh, like we had some earlier uh, on the Public Service Commission uh, in the old days or county supervisors, there was eight years of, uh, of Tate Reeves managing for the people the state treasury, then eight more years as lieutenant governor, and now almost four years as the governor. So some of these things that just pop up from the minds of people with a little innuendos are uh, almost laughable if they weren't that serious. Well, look... We're gl I'm glad you're there, and I'm glad you are out there working because we're going to need it. If uh, And people in this audience, which God bless them, we need every single one of them not only to go to the polls, but get somebody else out there, too. Carrie, don't give up the fight. Keep going. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. Carrie Abernathy, we have news and an update of what's going on.